liken your campaign to, you I mean, just, just as, you know, right now, as a third party? And, the, and that's the other win. We don't have to win the White House in order to win the day. Okay, and we can, we can win the day because the public supports these solutions. So if we're on the ballot, which we are in Texas, and we're on our way to getting on the ballot in most, just about every state around the country, um, we ensure that these issues cannot be suppressed. They cannot be locked out. These, this is basically the voice of the everyday American. The everyday American has an option to actually be in this election and to drive their solutions forward. So that begins to change the playing field right there. We change the terms of the debate and we can actually move forward health care as a human right under a Medicare for all system, which saves us money as well. Well, that takes me to, I mean, how can 2012 be a year where you grow sort of the prospect or you grow the stature of a third party? Because, I mean, that's, that's Great. Is, that, is that part and, of what and, your role it, is? Exactly, and, and let me tell you, our model for doing this was Massachusetts. Okay. Not that things are perfect, but that it helped me, you know, respond to the, um, the, the requests, the arm twisting for me to get into this race. It helped me a lot to know what we had been able to do at the state level and to have that really as a model. At Massachusetts, I ran, you know, at the statewide level mm -hmm. a couple times, knowing it wasn't likely that we were going to be able to win, but that we would change the conversation. Mm -hmm. And at a time when people are increasingly hitting the wall mm -hmm. and hitting the breaking point and are breaking away from the establishment politics, they are really looking for an alternative. So our most recent legislative election in Massachusetts, uh, our candidate, it was a special election actually for state legislature, our candidate was only 200 votes short of actually winning that election and actually got all of the endorsements from the groups, the environmental, the labor groups, the women's groups, uh, that normally those endorsements would have gone to a Democrat. Well, they're not so much going to Democrats anymore because Democrats have sort of left that agenda behind. Yeah. The Greens have uh, inherited that agenda There's and stood up for it. When you talk in that, in that um, vein, though, I mean, there is a certain fear among progressives that you're, that you're siphoning votes away um, and strengthening, you know, the prospect of... Which is why candidates. it's so, so how important. Do you address, how do you address that? We point to exactly what's happened because that viewpoint has mm -hmm. really prevailed. So many yeah. progressives have muzzled themselves. Mm -hmm. And so we simply point out that this, you know, this silence We've been told, be quiet. This silence has not been an effective political strategy. How is this lesser evil thing working out for you exactly? How's that job? And how's your pay going? And how about your health care? You know, silence doesn't move you forward. Silence is effectively complicity. And silence is a propaganda campaign by the establishment parties who are looking to silence the opposition. That's what they did. And what did we get for it? We learned that the politics of fear is really good at delivering all those things that you're afraid of. Count the ways on the expanding wars, the meltdown of the climate, the collapse of the economy, which still continues to teeter on the brink of the collapse, that we have assured those policies by silencing ourselves as the only voice of the public interest. So if you're going to silence the only non-corporate public interest voice out there, you can be sure that what you're going to get is a race to the right by the two corporate sponsored parties. And that's exactly what happens. So by voting for the lesser evil, you effectively guarantee that over the next four years, that lesser evil will have adopted all the policies of the greater evil. And the greater evil have, will, will have gone even further over the cliff. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happens. And you know, if that doesn't convince you, look at history. Because how is it that we've actually moved forward? It always takes a social movement on the ground and thanks to Occupy and students and and immigrants we have that movement it's standing up right now for justice and democracy all over the world actually but all over the country as well we've got a social movement but throughout history it has taken a social movement together with an independent political party that can help articulate the agenda and the demands because social movements don't necessarily do that. They have other work to do. Whereas political parties are very good at articulating agendas and demands and a vision. That's what they're all about. So it's the two together, social movements working with independent political parties that have made history together. 
in the abolition movement, there was actually a liberty party that helped drive that issue into political dialogue. Mm -hmm. In the uh, women's uh, right to vote mm -hmm. movement, the women's suffrage movement, there was always the women's party mm -hmm. for uh, workers' right to organize, to unionize, to a 40-hour work week, safe mm -hmm. workplaces. That was articulated by the socialists, the labor, and the progressive parties, among others. So it's always been this union. When you're really needing a paradigm shift, mm -hmm. when you really need fundamental change, it never comes from the political establishment, which has been corporate sponsored mm -hmm. from before the founding of this country. In fact, the power of corporations is not something new. This goes way back when the Tea Party, you know, when the Americans held the original Tea Party, you know, in Boston Harbor, that was in opposition to the East India Tea Company, as well as the governor, uh, you know, of the of, Mass, of the colony of Massachusetts and the king. It was about overthrowing aristocracy, but the institution of aristocracy was the, you know, it was the corporation, mm -hmm. and every colony had its own corporation. So, you know, this is a basic American quest for liberty and justice. It's about taking power back. Well, it's about asserting the power that's already there for we the people, uh, as opposed to the corporations who are running the show through their sponsorship mm. right now of the Democratic and Republican parties. Mm. They are both equally corporate sponsored. <laughs>